Hello there, welcome to Genesis Models. My name is Bob Waldron and welcome to this inbox review. We're going to be taking a look at this beautiful Dauntless here. It is the SBD2 um, United States Navy Battle of Midway. It's 148 scale and it's by Academy. Or should I say it's been reboxed by Academy? It was originally an accurate miniatures kit. And now it retails at around about the £28 mark, so not a bad price. But if you look at when accurate miniatures Re, uh, did a whole new tool of this. It was back in 1997-ish. Uh, quite an old kit, basically. Um, Academy reboxed it in 2020. Right, so let's just take a look and let's see if this has maybe got a little bit old in the tooth or not. So, first off, we can look at um, uh, the surface detail on our fuselage section. Maybe get this out of the way. Sorry. Uh, and get you in nice and close. I mean, first thing you'll see is, you know, the good old, you know, accurate miniatures where it's a very crisp, solid bit of recess panel line work. Not really seeing any rivets on the... Um, on this fuselage, you will notice a little bit of flash, as you can see just there. We've got a bit of flash going on there, a little bit of flash going on there. I mean, it is just a little bit here, there, and everywhere, but, but it, it's not such a big deal. I mean, you can sand it out, cut them out. It's not like terrible. It's just a little bit of work, right? Um, on the inside, we do have like a bit of rib work going on there, but there is a little ejector pin mark or two here and there that you might want to get rid of. Um, what else we've got here? We've got a bit of the engine cowl-ish, I think, area, uh, which is actually rather, rather cool. Uh, I don't know how well you're picking up that on camera, but you can almost see the flathead screws that are in there, right? Really good, minute detail going on with um, some of those screws in there. Do, do like that, very, very nice. Um, moving along, we have uh, the wing section. Again, same lovely bit of surface detail, very, very crisp, but then I did notice this one panel somewhere. Yes, uh, this one little panel just here. It's the only one I've kind of noticed, but you can kind of see there's half a panel recessed and the other half has disappeared appeared whatever's going on with that but it is the only one i've sort of noticed um nice bit of lovely detail in the center there uh wheel wells has not really much detail going on in there but there might be some bits um that you maybe stick in there um and apart from that that sprues pretty all good uh we then have a bunch of little bits here and as well as the clear part we do have our propeller nothing really to write home about but um, the engine does look like we're going to get a nice bit of detail to build up to make a nice engine just in there uh, we have what looks like to be some sort of a free fall bomb just here which is looking actually rather nice rather crisp um, lots of lovely detail here i'm not sure exactly what that is um, but it should look nice apart from there is a bit of flash on there so there's a lot of fiddling around trying to get rid of that flash some more free fall bombs uh, we've got a bit of the tail section a bit of cockpit detail here which hopefully you can sort of see lots of lovely dials and stuff you know top-notch detail for such an old old kit which is what we kind of love about the old accurate miniatures ones uh, we have more detail here with um, a bit of landing gear again lots of detail going on there especially with the hoses and the pipes again i mean sadly there's a bit of flash i know we've got to kind of deal with that with this kit um, not seeing any ejector pin marks and nasty places on that. Again, we've got some lovely, more internal detail looking very, very good there. As you can see, that'll go nice on the walls, hopefully covering up some of those um, ejector pin marks. So a bit of test fitting to go on there. And again, we've got all this lovely detail as well going on with that. Um, moving along, uh, we have some of our engine detail. Again, looks rather good rather rather crisp uh, looks like some um, floor detail here for the cockpit again bags and bags of detail I can feel like raised rivets and stuff going on there uh, looks like some MG's and wheels uh, not looking too bad All right hubcaps got a bit of detail on them 
as well. Ah, I was just looking for the instrument display panel because I was like, where is it? Um, it wasn't in there. It's actually in the clear parts section, just there, which hopefully you can see is looking very sort of detailed. Um, and I mean, it's one way of going about doing, um, you know, having those nice clear sort of um, uh, instrument display dolls and stuff. I'm, I'm not sure if it's a bit more of a pain. Is there like decals in here for that purpose? Um, not really seeing any. So I mean, eh, you know, it might work um, if you put a bit of effort into it, maybe to to get some clear um, dials coming off of it. Uh, but yeah, we do have our um, our canopy section just here. Um, now it does look good, does look shiny. I mean, as you could see on on, on um, the camera, you know, we've even got some recessed rivets going around the edges and stuff. But if I put it up to the light, the one thing you're probably going to notice is there is a little bit of a cobweb effect going on. The kind of cobweb effect where basically when it injects the plastic into each one of these little um, tabs just here, what happens is is when those two um, pieces of that, that um, sort of melted plastic comes together and meets, if they're at different temperatures, it can create a bit of a cobweb sort of line in it. And it does have one or two of them in there, which is sadly down to the core. I mean, you won't be able to sand them out or anything. It's there and it's there to stay, which is one of those things, that, a little bit of a shame, a bit of a um, an off put for me personally. Um, admittedly, when you do actually have them in the uh, on the model and stuff, they are a bit harder to see because I mean you do have to kind of put up to light to see those kind of things. Um, I don't know if you can sort of see it. There is one like right there. I don't think you can sort of see that. Maybe you could just see there. Maybe you could just see that in there. There's a little line just there yeah you could probably see that on camera now um that kind of stuff a uh, bit disappointing but that is that then we have um the decals the decals do look rather good you know good color um you know you can sort of see you know the small writing as well which is rather rather good we do have some weird seat belts as decals not exactly uh, my cup of tea. They do seem to provide some seat belts in photo etch. Uh, I think the photo etch is maybe a bit of a gimmick because it's not really exactly much photo etch going on in, in there. But let's just have a quick look at, there's another, seems to be a decal sheet here. It'd be interesting to see what it is. If I just open this up, All right? What is it? Oh no, actually it's a canopy mask. Now that is, rather rather cool that they've uh, included a nice canopy mask with it so you know for like 28 pounds to get a bit of photo which is maybe a bit of a gimmick but to get some canopy mask as well which is a bit of an aftermarket part is a nice little bonus to kind of jazz up uh, this old kit so all in all um you know what yeah it's still good i mean i think it's still a good thumbs up i mean it is showing its age admittedly you know a bit of flash bit of eject pin marks which can be dealt with with a bit of work um, apparently these accurate miniatures kits do fit together rather rather good the surface detail is good very very crisp um, the one probably big thing about this kit which probably kind of puts me off is those little cobweb effects um but then I'll probably, I'm probably a bit too OTT with that kind of stuff. I mean, it, it's, it is a bit hard to see, especially when it's in, uh, when the canopies are stuck on the model. Um, but apart from that, I mean, actually for an old kit, you know, I think it's still live and kicking. Um, maybe, yeah, I suppose 28 pounds is not bad. I mean, maybe it could be a bit cheap because it's a bit of an old kit. But apart from that, yeah, I mean, I, I could recommend it as being a nice daunt list to, to add to your Battle Midway collection or something like that. Um, yeah, so definitely a big thumbs up. Um, but as always, until next time, my name is Bobby Waldron. This is Genesis Models, and I hope you've enjoyed.